Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, wonderful weekend of golf returning in the Gap region. My name is Jason Funderberg. Uh, I'm joined here by Martin Emino and Tony Regina, as well as Dan Schofield, the entire communications department. Uh, Tony and Marty will be handling uh, questions um, in the questions tab. Feel free to ask any at any time. Um, we are going to have some question and answer slides throughout um, to go over uh, any questions you guys may have. Um, as well as uh, we are going to be recording this webinar. Uh, it's going to be posted um, to gapgolf.org slash gap dash webinars and that website's going to be posted at the end of this presentation here. Uh, now I'm going to toss it over to our social media guru, Dan Schofield. Dan, you want to take it away? Let's do it. All right, guys, welcome to another uh, GAP webinar. Like Jason said, my name is Dan Schofield, and I'm going to be leading a conversation today surrounding social media and its importance, especially in today's current time of uh, crisis. So to start, um, social media is, is one of our main focuses here. Oh, one second. Sorry, guys. So like I was saying, social media is really one of our main focuses here at GAP uh, for our communications team. It's one of our biggest channels for um, communicating with our members and our member clubs. So as many of you know, we're active on three platforms and those are Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we'll go over all three of those. Um, we do take a lot of pride in, in these channels and the content we produce, but we also take a lot of pride in showcasing our member clubs content. Um, so as we begin here, let's just go over a few talking points that we'll, we'll hit today. So first we're, like I said, we're going to go over the three main platforms that your club uh, should be on. Next up, we're gonna talk about social media's benefits uh, during COVID-19. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna, we're gonna hit some member club examples and some examples from our GAP, GAP account, just to kind of give you a feel for, uh, for best practices. Finally, we'll, we'll talk about social media strategies and how to implement one. And throughout, we will also have question slides uh, sprinkled throughout. So please, if you have anything at all, just, just let us know. Uh, like Jason said, my colleagues, Marty and Tony, will be at the ready uh, to answer any, any questions as well as myself. So fire away. All right. All right, so let's talk some Twitter. Um, to really put it simply for you, Twitter is like the modern newspaper. Uh, when people wake up, especially myself and a lot of people I know for, the, for that matter, it's really the first thing that they, they do when they wake up, they reach for their phone and, and they check Twitter to see what's going on. This is where you're gonna wanna push important updates on. Uh, you're also gonna see a lot of interaction uh, between other member clubs, other golf associations, outlets. So it's really important to have a, have a presence on this one. Uh, this is also where you can kind of develop your club's voice and brand, kind of have a personality. And we've seen we've seen different personalities come through, and it's really fun to see. And that can be anywhere from relaxed and fun to conservative and professional. It all works. You just got to find a healthy balance, and we'll talk more about that. Um, on the right here, you will see a example of a, uh, one of our latest tweets announcing the golf course reopenings in Pennsylvania. And if you look down there real small on the bottom, you can see 96 retweets, 308 likes. And that's uh, that just goes to show you the, the type of reach that you can get um, on these platforms. And we'll talk more about analytics as we go on. All right, next up is Facebook. And this is one that we're probably all familiar with. Um, we're, we probably all have personal profiles on. Um, and this is, this is the platform that we really strive to reach our mid to senior age golfers on. Uh, and our analytics tell us that that's, that's the case. So we, we really try to reach that demographic through Facebook and 
it's it's because most of our members are, are going to be on here. Uh, Facebook is a very open format platform compared to the others, but it's also with that open openness and freedom comes a lot of technicalities, and it, it means that there's a little more to learn, which is all good, but uh, it just takes a little more time to get get the feel of. We, we like to push things like like photos, contests, and just kind of general updates to let people know that, that we're there, we're, we're engaging uh, on our Facebook. And you can see there on the right, we there's an example of our, of our post. Uh, we did a bracket style contest of the top moment of the gap decade. Our winner, Chris Crawford, qualified for back-to-back -back US Opens. Um, so just an example of, of what you can do. So Facebook's really about engaging with our, our members and, our, and golfers. Uh, every time we post, we really expect people to comment. We expect people to interact. And 99% of the time, that's, that's going to be all good, positive stuff. Um, there is the 1% of the time where you're going to have to moderate and make sure that your page is clean. Um, and that just comes, comes along with the job. But Again, 99% of the time, it's going to be really good, positive stuff. Uh, consistency is really key, but you don't want to overload it on Facebook because people don't don't want you flooding their timelines, um, to be honest. So we like to keep it to about one to two posts per day, just so we don't get too too much in there in our audience's face. But we also want to, want to let them know that we're we're there every day engaging. And like I said earlier, this is going to be your best platform to gauge the wide audience of, of your membership because everyone's on Facebook for the most part. Um, so it's important, like I said, to have a presence uh, on this platform. All right, next up is the wonderful world of Instagram. So this is going to be the newest platform of the three that we're talking about, and it's also going to be the most visual. Um, the first thing that we do need to know here is that this is where you're going to reach your junior golfers. And I, I really can't stress that enough. Uh, it's, it's amazing the opportunity for growth that is going to be on Instagram. Um, and, and if you're not on it, then you're really missing out on a crucial golfing demographic for the game, for new members, uh, et cetera. So think, think, about, think about this as, as we talk about Instagram. And while, while there aren't as many people on Instagram and you won't get as many followers, the interaction rate is going to be sky high. You're gonna get a lot of likes, a lot of, a lot of comments. Um, so for that alone, it's, it's really or, organically beneficial. Uh, and like I did say earlier, this is where you can kind of get creative with those visual aspects of your club. Um, and, and many of you already have a feel for, for this with course photos and videos and stuff like that. Um, and, and it's really, really easy as, as clicking the camera button on your phone and, and uploading, letting people know that, that you're out there. Instagram also gives you the opportunity for like I said, videos, daily stories, live streaming, it's all great, easy content and people, people love it. Um, the, the Instagram Live is something that uh, we, we are very interested in. We, we do use Periscope on Twitter. Uh, we live stream our, a lot of our tournament action and we get thousands, thousands of views on, on that. So people love something, something live, especially when they're home right now with not much to do. Um, so what, to end the Instagram talk, I, I want to make sure that, that we hammer home that young market angle. Uh, and, and like I said, the opportunity for growth is there. I've spoken to so many junior golfers at gap tournaments that have their, the first thing that they'll come up to me and say is, Hey, I, I saw your Insta. That, that was awesome. You know, great, great photo. Can I get on there? Stuff like that. So the junior golfers, this is where they're coming to. So really think about if your club is doing what it, what it should be to, to reach that demographic. Um, and Instagram is, like I said, it's an amazing tool and highly advise everyone to, to look into it. All right, so Jason, let's open it up, see if we have any questions so far. 
Yep, just one so far, uh, but I think it's a good one. Um, it's going back to that 1% you were talking about, uh, you know, 99% being good comments and, and great interaction, but that 1% being bad. How do you balance bad feedback that you generally wouldn't want the, the public to see? What's your approach to, um, to responding to those and, and kind of diffusing those negative comments? That's a really good question. Um, I, I would I would say that, like I said, 99% of the time you're going to get positive stuff. So you don't you don't have to worry about this too much. But that 1% of the time you're going to get people that are either going to uh, be kidding around and and as they call it trolling and will be all over your pages. And uh, you can it's very easy to to hide um, really bad stuff. The negative stuff you don't you don't you you want to leave there and you can either respond uh publicly very you know very neutrally or you can i like to take the approach i like to direct message uh if a member is unhappy or mm -hmm. is raising a concern i like to just direct message them and kind of feel out what their concerns is see if we can put it at ease uh privately another quick question here um have you seen any of the clubs in, in Gap using these avenues to promote things other than golf, like weddings, um, banquets, stuff like that? Absolutely. There's there's a number of examples of of clubs, especially the wedding wedding business is is very popular on social media. So clubs have been doing a great job with that. Uh, sometimes they'll even launch a separate banquet account for stuff like that. But it's uh, it's definitely something that I, I've seen successfully done all across uh, social media. Instagram is very popular for something like that. And we'll talk more about uh, dining options. Um, that's another popular non-golf item that our member clubs highlight. Right. Um, I got a question here about who who do you find is typically responsible for managing the social media at clubs? Is it one person dedicated to that role, or do you find that uh, it's more of a, a group effort? So it it is going to be only one to two people is what I suggest, and we will talk more about this as as we talk about growing your brand and voice. So I will uh, I will hit on that question here in a, in a few slides uh, more in depth. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, I think it's we're good to move on here. If you do have questions, please uh, please feel free to send them in. Um, if we don't get to them today, we will respond to those uh, you know after the webinar. All right. So using social media during COVID nineteen, obviously this is going to apply uh, to us right now. So let's start off um, and talk about our goals, which Gap and all of our member clubs goals are exactly the same right now. And that's communicating with our members and providing value. Um, luckily the golf courses are, are opening today in Pennsylvania, tomorrow in New Jersey and, and the Gap region will be will be reopened by the end of the weekend. So that's, that's great for value, but we also need to, um, you know, remain transparent and communicating uh, with the members while that goes on. Um, next up, like I said, communication with members is more essential than ever right now because everyone is home and online constantly looking for news and updates. It is our job to provide them with all of that. Um, it, a lot of unknown right now. A lot of unknown, especially you know, a golfers coming to their golf course that will have to adapt to changes. And if you, if on social media you can ease their mind and and give them the answers they're looking for, then your club will will honestly run a lot smoothly with the reopening uh, process. Highlighting the positives is very important right now, and I've seen a lot of good examples of that uh, from our member clubs. So bravo to that. Um, there's been an outpouring of amazing posts and, and uh, Instagrams by Gap Member Clubs highlighting charity drives, food drives, community outreach, and it's really invaluable content. So love, love to see all of that, keep it coming. Next up, emphasis, emphasis on the word free and social media is free, effective, proven marketing. And analytic tools are plenty. You can, if you're looking for numbers, they're there. If you're looking for charts to show to your committee members, they're there. 
And like I said, it's a little more in depth on the back end to find these. Um, but if, if you ever have questions with that, you can reach out to uh, to our team and I can walk you, walk you through those analytic tools for any of the platforms. And last but not least, during COVID-19, now is the perfect time to build your social media presence. Uh, view, views and engagements were, were, will never be higher than they are right now, uh, to put it, put it simply. And that's because, like I said, everyone is at home, everyone is looking for stuff to do, and everyone misses their, their golf. So let's, let's provide it to them, and, and along the way, you're gonna build that following that you may have not had a year ago. So this is the perfect time to start this project, either launching social media channels or just building on the ones that are already in place. All right, so let's take just uh, take a look at some examples uh, from the last few weeks of member clubs that I, that I thought kind of stood out. Uh, as you see here, we'll start with Twitter. So Philly Cricket, they do a really good job with their social media. And as you can see here, they had a Q&A with PCC member Michael Bamberger, who many of us are all aware um, of. And it's just a simple announcement, hey, we're going to do a Q&A, come on in, posted a, a little snippet of it and heard good things about that. Here's an example of Lulu, uh, simple, simple photo of a flag. This is what I mean when good, easy content. Uh, and just, hey, we're opening today. Uh, can't wait to see you guys. And you can take notice there, uh, they do have a club hashtag and hashtags are really important. Uh, I advise all clubs to come up with one for their clubs specifically, as you see there, Lulu CC1912. And that kind of keeps everything in one basket if someone uh, is trying to research or look up your club on social media. And then here's a good example of a contest uh, from Ledge Rock. Um, again, contests do really well, especially with your members, because people love free stuff and, and they love the, uh, the chance, <laughs> chance to win while engaging. All right, next up, here's some good examples from Instagram in the last few weeks. Uh, on the left, you'll see Riverton has done a really, really fine job of uh, posting their dining menus. And right now, this is for all of you, I'm sure it's a a uh, huge part of the business aspect of your club. So it, it just simple, hey, this is, these are our specials today. This is what we got going on. Um, and they, like I said, Riverton, if you want some good examples of that, they've done a really nice job with that. Over at White Marsh Valley, this is a uh, takeout food um, picture. And uh, again, that's simple, that uh, anyone can take that picture and it just shows people that you have you have a presence, and that there's stuff going on at the club during a time where many think that there isn't stuff going on. Um, luckily, the golf is going to help us out, but food is is definitely a priority for clubs right now on their social media channels. And lastly, Uni League on the right, um, a beautiful course photo, Re really really nice. And as you can see, 247 likes on that. And that just goes to show you, course photos do amazing on, on Instagram, um, also the other platforms, but it's really important for your club to have good course photos and to use them. And we would be more than happy to help you out. Uh, we, we have a ton of photos on file. So if you're interested to see what we have, just shoot, shoot us an email and, and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you on that. All right. And now we have some good Facebook examples to end off. Um, on the left, you got Chamber Chambersburg. Um, we had their professional Jameson Wallace on last week on our Gap on Zoom series. And that, that's just an example of the club playing off of our post and reposting to their members um, and engaging. And, and again, it's, uh, that just double, doubles the views that you're gonna get and widens the reach. In the middle, there's an example of DuPont, uh, a Mother's Day brunch coming up. And again, just a simple simple dining option uh, post goes a long way there. And then on the right, you have uh, Coatesville with the reopening tweet. And on, on the bottom, you'll see 65 likes and uh, a couple comments and shares. And 
that photo was probably taken right outside the clubhouse uh, in, in 10 seconds. So again, just goes to show you easy content, people love it, and they just wanna see their golf course. All right, let's open it up, see if anyone has any more questions. If not, we'll move on. Yeah, Dan, a uh, little late on the questions for this section, but I've got a couple of my own. Um, so obviously we wanna be cognizant of celebrating the return of golf, but balancing that with the proper tone in this time of crisis. Any suggestions you have on how we can show that kind of restraint um, in our posts? Of course, so th that is something that we've we've uh, strategized here at Gap. Um, being safe on the golf course needs to be everyone's number one priority right now, and, and we recognize that. Uh, it's also very exciting for a lot of people to get back out on the golf course, so we need to find that healthy balance. Uh, every post that we've done uh, regarding the reopenings, we've made sure to attach our guidelines and just a, a gentle reminder for for people to to say, hey, you know, we're out here, this is great, but we need to be safe. Um, and you can find those guidelines on gapgolf.org for uh, either Pennsylvania or New Jersey specific. Um, and I, and again, we recommend re recommend uh, having your members read those and pay attention to those while getting back out there. Right. Another one that popped into my head, um, you know, obviously social media is great for for sh for showcasing your club and, and everything it has to offer. Have you seen any uh, clubs using that as a tool for recruitment for, for new members? Obviously, now's a different time with the crisis that we have going on. But uh, just in general, have you seen that? And have you talked to anyone that's reported success with doing that? Absolutely. This is going back to this effective marketing tool. And again, it is free and there's not a lot of, of free, uh, free, powerful tools out there. And I would, I would venture to say social media will be one of your biggest recruitment tools um, available. And I have talked to a number of clubs that have used virtual tours, um, uh, course photos, uh, and again, find, uh, giving uh, people access to your social media voice, it kind of allows them to get a feel for what the club is like. So developing your voice and your brand is very, very important uh, for prospective members. Uh, got another one here about uh, blue check marks on our, on our Twitter page. Um, what is that and, and how can I get that for my account? So the blue blue check mark is a highly sought out uh, verification process, and if, if you're over, I would say 3,000 uh, followers on, especially Twitter, then you can apply for a verification check mark. Uh, it did. It took us about a couple months to get ours, um, and if that's something that you guys are looking to do, just reach out to me, and and, I, and we can walk through that that together. And one last question here: um, how, how can how can I convert social media followers into potential customers? How would you recommend doing that in in your posts? Right. So uh, we will talk about that coming up here in the strategy Perfect. portion of, of the presentation. So let's mm -hmm. uh, let's move Table on uh, to the next slide, and and we'll I'll, I'll dive into that a little a little more. Perfect. Thanks everyone for your. All right, so like I said, let's let's talk strategy here. Um, so this is going to vary uh, club by club, and it's it's going to vary a lot. So you should have one to two people dedicated to running your social media channels, no more than two, and that's really important so that you have a consistent voice. Uh, otherwise, things might get too complicated and and you might have a problem. So it, again, it's really important just to have one or two trusted sources. Uh, and who can those sources be? I've seen anywhere from a GM to a pro to a dedicated communication staffer. Um, so again, it's going to it's going to vary a lot uh, club by club. But uh, obviously, having a dedicated communication staffer will, would be the uh, ideal. Fit. Um, but if not, anyone from uh, GM Pro, I've seen interns, um, all the above, just someone that you're going to trust and only one to two people is what I would suggest. 
The next challenge that we uh, just talked about on the question slide is finding that voice and brand to appeal to new customers and current members. Uh, choose what kind of voice you want to represent your club and just stick with it. I've seen clubs go anywhere from really fun and kind of out there uh, responding to people as in it's it's a person the club is is their own type of person um, but I've also seen clubs you know be very professional very on point and just uh, straight straight to the point uh, when responding and, and producing content so it's kind of what you want your your club to be uh, kind of kind of be out there in the open for people to get a feel for what the club is actually like. Next up is consistency is very, very key uh, when implementing a strategy. And don't, I, the number one piece of advice I like to give people is do not post 10 times a day and then go a week without posting. That's not, that's not what it, a successful social media strategy is gonna entail. So try to set a goal for yourself and try to get one, one maybe two posts out per day on, on each platform, uh, just to show people that you're always engaged, but you're not going back to earlier, you're not throwing things in people's face, faces uh, too much and flooding their timelines. Again, the visual content is gonna be best received across all three platforms, not just Instagram. Uh, our goal at Gap every time we post is we strive to have a piece of visual content attached to every single post. And this can be anything from a member club horse photo, a action shot from one of our Gap tournaments, a short video, um, even your member club's logo, That as simple as that. It, and this, this will kind of help draw eyes in to each post and and again, it, no, try not to just post text because that'll, that'll draw people away. A lot of people nowadays, if they see text, they might just skip over it. So try to get something attached to it that's, that's visually appealing. Last but not least, uh, this might be the most important piece of advice I can give when implementing a social media strategy, and that's engaging with your members. You want to keep your audience happy and interested at all times. Um, if, if say someone comments on your picture, respond back to them. If someone likes likes your Instagram or comments on Instagram, like their comment. Just show that that they're recognized. People, if people engage, they want to feel recognized. That's the number one goal. Um, and just show people that that you're taking taking note that they're that they're have eyes on your content. All right, and sending off the strategy, this is going to appeal to all of us right now. So let's uh, let's dive into some course reopening strategies for today and, and this weekend and the coming weeks. Uh, this chart is something that we put together after, uh, after our Pennsylvania course reopening post. Uh, we had one post go out on uh, all three of our platforms, and this just gives kind of a snapshot of what each of those posts uh, captured in terms of audience, uh, engagement, and, and reach overall. So we were, we were one of the first outlets to get the news out that, that Pennsylvania golf courses were reopening. So as you can see, the numbers on the bottom uh, are pretty high. Um, in, the, in the chart, the green bars will represent our total reach and uh, it's pretty amazing the numbers, uh, as you can see there on the bottom, that, that we were able to attain. And the reason I'm showing you guys this is because it's, it's not just uh, our Gap accounts that, that can capture this audience, it's, it's you guys as well. It just depends what type of content you're pumping out. So Twitter is gonna be where our bigger, biggest, bigger, sorry, biggest numbers came in at. Uh, you'll see that in that one tweet, we were able to reach over 40,000 different users. And that came along with around 5,000 engagements. And those engagements are anywhere from comments to likes 
to uh, just interactions overall, uh, link clicks, stuff like that. Facebook was also uh, up there in terms of views. We had nearly uh, 30,000 views on Facebook for that single post, and the engagement rate was also very high uh, there as well. Now, you, you can take note on the, uh, the Instagram portion there, the, the total reach was not very high at all, relatively compared, uh, not even 10,000, which again, so, so pretty high, and we would be happy with that on, a, on a, any given day. But I really want you to take note on the, at, at the uh, blue bar there to show you the ratio between engagement and reach. This is just really is a great example of Instagram, <coughs> excuse me, the Instagram ratio of interactions to followers slash engage, um, reach. So on Instagram, if you post, people will engage. It's a, it's a very intriguing uh, platform, and I think this is a great example of that. So let's let's go into what you guys can do um, to to reopen on social media, and uh, we'll start with building the buzz. And to be honest, this is, this is a simple simple strategy here because everyone's already excited about golf. Um, so it's easy to get to to build a buzz with I, I think course photos and and maybe videos of, of people out there this weekend. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people like myself aren't going to be able to play golf this weekend. So just give people an idea of what they can expect uh, for when they get back out there. Next up, and this is I, I've seen some really really good example of this already. Uh, I think that highlighting social dis distancing measures right now is extremely important. Um, e ease the minds of, of people. We're seeing a, a lot of golfers interact with us that are excited about courses reopening. We had people begging us uh, for the past few weeks to uh, get courses reopened all over the region. And now that it's back, let's, uh, let's make sure golfers know that it's safe to be out there. We've seen some really good stuff from member clubs with, uh, you know, whole adaptions and stuff like that. Uh, easy content and pe people will be reassured by it. Uh, definitely a lot more pool noodle noodles on our feeds these days. Uh, that's for sure. So keep it coming. All good stuff. Next up, and we've talked about this earlier, but let's be transparent with all of our members right now. Um, Social media is going to be such a good tool for that. Um, so email is is very important as well. But social media is it's easy. Everyone's there. We know everyone has eyes on it. So let's let's just be transparent with our members. Um, a lot of questions may may come in, and it, it will probably be easy to to fire back and answer on social media. We, like I said, we do need to help them feel at ease and kind of understand what what changes are upon us. So um, if, if there's any change to, to your club's guidelines that, that pop up from day to day, just fire out an update on one of your channels or all your channels. Make sure people know what to expect when they get to the club. Last but not least, um, moving forward and, and for right now, Let's take advantage of this time that we have um, to to capture new and old audience members. And th this could mean new members. This could mean old members. It, it's such an important time for all of us um, on, on social media to to take advantage of this time that we have. Uh, I mean, this this Gap webinar and the webinar series overall is, is a prime example of utilizing our time right now uh, online and finding a way to to reach a new audience. Uh, a year ago, it, we would we, we all would have been out on a golf course and spending our time there. Um, but right now we have the time, so might as well use it to our advantage. And we've seen some great benefits already pouring in from it. And with that, I, I think uh, I think we can wrap up. Maybe ask answer a few more questions. Jason, we have we have anything else? Uh, yeah, I've got a question for you here. If if uh, say you only have time or energy or effort for one social media platform, which one would you choose, and and why would you choose that 
that one to engage your members with? So this is a really important question. Uh, thank you for bringing this up. Um, we personally, I, I would recommend having a presence at at minimum two. Um, but if you have to prioritize a single platform, uh, just from time wise, it would be Facebook. And uh, from the member club perspective, it's going to be Facebook because that's where you can guarantee your membership is going to be. Uh, and you can also guarantee a lot of a lot of interaction and feedback from Facebook because everyone is almost guaranteed to be on it. Whereas something like Twitter or Instagram, you might only be reaching a certain demographic. So prior to prioritize Facebook as your launching platform. And then uh, work, I, I, again, I would work in at least a, a second platform to go along with that and then work your way up uh, to a third. Perfect. Um, we're a little light on questions in the question section. Please feel free to submit any um, in the last couple of minutes here. Um, while we're waiting for any that may come in, just want to rem remind everyone um, that today's webinar is being recorded. It's going to be posted uh, at the website here on your screen, gapgolf.org slash gap dash webinars um, and that also has all of our um, webinars for, that we previously previously did as well as registration links for all of our upcoming ones some of our upcoming uh, webinars include uh, a women's webinar and how gap is uh, is benefiting uh, our, our female golfers uh, that's on tuesday may 5th at 2 p.m we also have wednesday may 6th um, committee roles in the world handicap system uh, as well as Thursday, May 7th, uh, at Slope Rating Explained. Both of those two are at 10 a.m. as well. Um, and Dan's looking like uh, questions are, are stopping here. Um, oh, got one real quick. Um, do you use GIFs in your posts or do you still prefer pictures? What, what, do, what would you uh, recommend um, on that? Love, love that question. Um, I, I personally, it, it's really easy to get creative with engaging with other people with gifts. We use a lot of gifts, um, say when one, one of our member clubs uh, sends something to us. I know, for example, Walnut Lane joined Twitter last night and uh, we welcomed them to, to Twitter and they fired back with a, with a uh, Tiger Woods waving gif. Um, that's just a good example of a way to get creative. Um, it's a little, little more difficult to do that on something like Facebook or Instagram, um, but yeah, gifts and any creativity is is you're, you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of engagement, a lot of beneficial stuff coming from that. Awesome. Well, uh, just want to remind everyone if you do have questions or something pops in your head later on after the webinar, please feel free to reach out to us. Anyone on the communication staff um, is always willing and able to uh, help out with any questions you may have. I uh, want to thank everyone for joining us today, uh, especially Dan for taking the time to uh, present to us. Um, thank you all very much and uh, have a great day. Enjoy golf this weekend.